Martin. And it's going to be given by the gentleman who, write, who wrote our technique book for us. He's been world champion three times, is on the board of directors, and is on the Latin Technical Committee. When I was studying, uh, somebody once said to me, if you take this gentleman to bed with you every night, you will pass. And then what they meant, of course, was the technique book. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me very great pleasure to welcome Walter Laird and Julie Laird. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Madam, thank you. You can be my manager any time. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, the subject, of course, as you heard, is quality. You've just had a big lump of quality from the modern side. Now we throw another lump of uh, quality from the Latin point of view. Because one thing it tells us right away, dancing is all about, well, it's whatever sort of dancing it is, if it's going to be worthwhile, it must have quality. Uh, we, we get past the stage of the happy dance, a party dance. That's, that's good, that's, that's fantastic. People do that sort of dancing. But from those people come the 1%, the 2%, the 5% who say, that is not enough. I need to be... I'm a dancer, I love music, and I want to move to it. And in moving to music, our problems start. Because the body is not used naturally when you dance. It's not used naturally when you walk. You have to practice walking. We practice walking every day. If you break a leg or something terrible happens to you, and you can't walk, you're in bed for three or four months, you forget to know how to walk. You have to teach your muscles again that this is walking. Now, the same in the, the Latin dances and the modern dances. We have to teach our bodies to make the movements that produce these fantastic artistic interpretations of music. It's a fantastic thing, music. Um, Dancing, if you think about it, a dancer listens and a musician plays. The sounds come to his ear and he converts those sounds up here somewhere and what comes out of the feet and the body are fantastic movements which are created from hearing the music. Hear sound and if he produces action, movements. And the, this is what we're talking about all the time, and it's what we're teaching all the time, is moving. Move, and particularly moving to music. I was fascinated, I, I, I got caught in this, I suppose. I think it was just before the war. The last war, not in the poor war. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I won a, a jitterbug competition. And that started me on the the road to becoming a world champion. It was a long route, an interesting route, but I, I made it, I think, mainly because I took an interest in everything that I did as a dancer. I thought, I, I mean, as you just heard, to be a dancer, uh, you must want to dance. Not necessarily want to compete, but want to dance. It's when the dance becomes a competition uh, that you lose something. I remember <coughs> listening to a radio program, manager of a football team it was, and he said, when we get the youngsters in to play football, we try to teach them as much about the principles and the techniques of playing football before they start doing them, picking them for the team for the matches. He said, because once they get in the team, everything changes. Their rate of learning goes down and their rate of competitiveness goes up. And they're on the way up to this competitive toughness, this, this attack at some of the artistry, some of the mood and character disappears. So we've got to try to balance that. 
And you will say to me, maybe, all right. But um, my business is not with these people up here. We're, my business is with these people down here. They're my bread and butter. They're the people I like teaching. They're the people that I like to see develop. Well, that's very good. And you can tell those people that what you are teaching them, the principles you are teaching them through a technique, is exactly the same as the top six couples are learning and practicing every day. And one of the reasons probably why Donnie Burns is better than your gold medalist is that Donnie Burns does it more. He does it six hours a day. Because he's dedicated and he is practicing and learning, teaching his body how to do those simple little movements that you are teaching every day of the week. That's interesting if you think about it, isn't it? So what you must try to get over to your people is that it's not once a week dancing that's going to satisfy them if they want to feel good, if they want to be comfortable when they dance. It's really getting the muscles trained to understand what the signals from the brain are giving them, and that is muscular memory. There's no time for thought. They are doing them all the time quite thoughtlessly. They are thinking of other things as they dance, but the things that must come out are the things that come from the muscular memory of the body and the brain working together. And that is just repetition. So repetition is the thing that makes the top six stand out from the others at the fundamental level. And of course the fundamental level must be a level on which we base the winners. They are the the quality of the dance. And Julie and I, a few months, we were years ago now, we thought about this. We said, do you know, even dancing the basics is too difficult to learn because there's so many things in you know, a hockey stick or an alamana, there's probably five or six or seven different principles you've got to use. And you've got to practice those principles individually. So just to do an alamana or a hockey stick is quite a strain on somebody who wants to learn the principle of a walk, to learn the principle of a check forward walk, to learn the principle of stepping backwards. And so you will see, I keep talking to him because I'm connected with him quite a lot, you'll see Donnie Burns up against the wall, everybody's rushing around the room, and Donnie Burns is doing this for about an hour. <laughs> and he is learning how to do that damn backward walk for the lady and the check for the man. So we put together what we call calisthenic exercises. They are exercises where you, they are very simple because they are a minimum of what you can do but still dance. And the, these exercises allow you, or your pupils, to dance solo, so they don't need uh, a partner with them. They can practice solo at home even, or in your studio. They don't, if they've got time and the partner's not there, they can work alone. But they're not just working, they're working to improve that thing that is vital to them, which is a connection of the brain with the foot that's touching the floor, muscular memory. Um, would you like to... Could we have some mumble, please? Come on now. Is that the brain the other one? Mm. Now, um, do you agree with me this is a rumba? Is it a rumba? How do you know? How, do you, how can you say, that's a rumba? Rhythm. Fantastic. Uh, the bank, bank manager said to you now, thank you, dear, and you just said on my report, or the examiner says, you have bad rhythm. Can you tell me, please, what is rhythm? Rhythm. 
Right, you see, he gets through in the end. A regular occurrence of accent, he breathes his rhythm, or a rhythm. It could be uh, a pattern of sound in time. That is rhythm. If you've got a, uh, a television screen and you've got rhythm playing, you will see a pattern. And if it repeats itself, it's a rhythm. And that's a rhythm of a rumba. Why? How do you know? You need to know three things. Only three things. Then you know it's a rumba. Well, a waltz, let's take it, it's very simple, a waltz, isn't it? One simple rhythm. Three beats in a bar is a waltz. If the first beat is accented and it's played at 30 bars a minute, you've got an English waltz. Three beats in the bar, action, activity, impact on one, and it's played at 30 bars a minute, it's a waltz. So we need to know three things. How many beats in the bar, which beats are accented, and the tempo. That's about, a bit slow, it's about 26. 4-4, four, four, 28, and... Fourth beat. Okay, let's listen to it. <coughs> a little more top if you've got a bit there. One, two, three, four. So, it's not near enough, four beats in a bar, fourth accent. It's not wrong, but it's not excellent, because your ear is hearing eight things when a rumba plays, eight. Did you hear them there? Didn't hear four, heard eight. Because so, what doesn't matter what's written on that bit of paper, the, the music, that doesn't matter to the dancer. What matters is what the dancer hears, because that's what you dance to, what you hear. If you hear eight things in a bar, you must dance eight things if you're going to be in time and feel with that music. In other words, taking a maximum of quality out of the music, putting it in your body and showing it. So it's really eight sounds to the bar, and the seven, eight are accented. Can we do it one more time? Not too much, you'll want more money. <laughs> when she was moving there, Julie, she, my wife. <laughs> <That's insane>. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do it again, slowly, for me? Yeah. But, but, two things happen. Do it again. But, but, there's two very obvious things happen there. Ba, whoo, ba, another one. Again, 
that, 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 and ba, ba, and ba, ba, and ba. Da, 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 da. So see the, the activity, just the walk there, and there's no pattern at all, it's just, what's she doing? She's dancing a lot of important things, things that every rumba that everybody dances in the world is in, they are included in great numbers. A backward walk, ignore that for a moment, this is a backward walk here on the two beat, two and, a replacement of weight which is vital, two and, most girls leave out the and, and then three, two and three and four, and now another step forward, two and, and then this is a very important one, this, this what's it called? For, forward walk turning. Get that name in your head. A forward walk turning doesn't mean a forward walk then turn or a turn and a forward walk. It means while you are doing the forward walk, you turn all the time. That's what it means. And this is what she's doing. She's turning all the time and she dances that. And you notice that she hasn't quite made it because she wants to step back. She hasn't quite made it. Because if she did make it, the next step would be there. And, and then she steps back. So you can only make that three eighths, but you can't make it any more than three eighths. If you make a half, one is in front of the other. And the next thing I'm going to talk to you about a little later on, from here, that foot must still be in position when the music plays and after three. Three and. Good day. You do it better than me, do it again. Again. Three and. Now the foot is still in position. Therefore, is the important bit. This is no good. Three and. Now you've got in a slow foot speed, that foot must not move until and is played. And uh, music on again. <laughs> Very precise, you see, very accurate. And remember, there's two people in this dance. I'm not very good at it, so I asked Julie to do it. Comes to us all in the end. But let's take a hockey stick, for example. At two and three and four. Now, here is a step together, yes. Now, there's a much more important step. Go down there. That one. And this one I'm looking for. That one must be together. Do that again. Two and three and four and one. Two and three and. That's the one and that one must move together. How uh, vital it is that we are both aware of what happens on after and on the third count. I would like you all to come on the floor now and just do that. Very simple, isn't it? <laughs> Don't want you all, because nobody would see it. Oh, come on. Just a few that want to do it a bit better. <laughs> I want to go a little deeper now. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Four to one end. That's our preparatory step. Here starts the dance. It's a backward step. Well, it's the timing of a backward step. Four and one and woo! <laughs> two, right? But two is not enough. What else are we going to call it? A bit more? Two and. Ah, good. I want to see the and. I want to see it. <laughs> two 
an. Okay? Two and. Three and. Four and one and. <laughs> Five hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> you're really going on. For, take it your own speed, don't you? Four and one. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and. This is what we're going to want to get into, okay? Let's do it without music. Start on the four. My count. Ready? And. Four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three, four and one and start settling your weight. Get start doing a rumba. Very good. And four and one, two and three. Okay. Okay. Now. That is just about the easiest or the simplest way you can move to music without choreography. And the object of that exercise was to practice, this is just the state I was starting, to practice a backward walk, a backward walk, a replacement, a forward walk, a forward walk turning, sorry, forward walk, a forward walk turning, and repeat a backward walk, a backward walk, a replacement, important one, a forward walk, a forward walk, a forward walk turning, a backward walk. That is what you're doing there. Now, when you think of an open hip twist, if you like, here's a lady. Um, a backward walk, a replacement, a forward walk. A forward walk, a forward walk turning, a backward walk. A close, a, a forward walk, a forward. You're doing it all the time, but all in difficult shapes. That's very simple, because the next thing is the close. Four and one and. Two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and one. And close your feet and four and one. Two and three and close your feet and four and one. Two and three and four and one. And close. Okay, let's have a go at that one. To music. Go on, won't waste the electricity a bit more, won't cost us any more. Oh well, make you talking a little bit, make you counting a little bit quieter, because that's all we got. Well, one, two, three, four, and one. Two and three and four. Two and three and four. Close! Four. Two and three and four, close. Okay, one more bit of music coming up. Is that the best they can do for you? I can't believe that. Pay the bill. Four and one and, two and three and four. Two and three, a close coming up, a close, and a check. And you come back and start all again. Two and three and four and one, two and three, a close coming up, and a check. And back and start again. Okay?
Ready? And four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one of the clues. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. <laughs> and close, close, and she And back, and turn, comes the close, close, and now check, check. And back. And here comes the close now, and a close, and a check. Okay, now let's just look at those two extra things we've danced. We've danced a close. A terribly important thing for the ladies. Ladies, you, when you're dancing this, this thing, what could you do? You're there. Your toe is turned out a bit because of the inherent turn. You can close like this. Or you can close like this. All there. <laughs> or you can close like this, which is a very sensuous movement. As you close, you straighten. This is an inherent turn, it's not there. We lose it. And practice that. Practice. Lose. Yeah, D don't rise. And get the complete weight, change of weight, your back. There's a complete change of weight. The close is happening. Close and a complete change of weight. Again. A complete change of weight and you're off immediately. Two and three and four. One more time. Here we go all together. And uh, two and three and four. One more time. And uh, two and three and four. Okay, let's try that to my count. I'm giving up with the music. From the beginning, you. And uh, one, two, three, four and one. And two and three and four and one. Two and three, and close is coming. And now the check. Check, replace, and back. Two and three and four. Two and three and four. Close is coming. And now the check. From the beginning. Two, three, four. Two and three and four. Two, three, four. Four, two, and three, the close, yep, and the check, and the... <coughs> okay, thank you. Question. A question, uh, why do we need a special walk when we dance this check? Why we change it? Why do we need a special walk? Why? Yes, to change direction. But why is it? If we're going to do all this clever stuff, why are we going to do that? Why can't we do a normal one? <laughs> all right. In other words, you cannot commit your weight forward on a normal walk and then decide to go back. You can do if you do it like a beginner. Whoops. That's what we don't want. So you've got to check there, and your brain is saying, I am now going to go backwards. Two, and, two, and three, back. Two, and three, back. Two, and three, back. Toes turned out. Has to turn out. Two, and three, back. Here is centre weight, centre weight. There's an activity from the back knee, an ankle, an articulation. Two and three, back. Yeah. <coughs> oh. 
When, when that's danced badly, it looks terrible. These men look terrible when they get that wrong. They're here, beautiful young men, beautiful bodies. Hey, good. And then he goes, whoo. <laughs> he did it wrong. He did it in the wrong order. There. There. And hold me up and I'll fall over. Thank you. <laughs> there. There. And not this. There. And do nothing. Fact is, to entry, to entry, turn this very nicely. To entry, to entry. Can you watch the back foot? Uh, the thing here, um, we saw like Julie dance a close just now. Now, in a, any rumba, whatever level, the girl closes maybe 20 times in a normal two-minute rumba. A man probably two or three. Not, not on my side today, is he? Oh. <laughs> the close is a, a step that the, the lady really wants to perfect. The Czech, the man dances about 30 times in a normal rumba, and the lady, two or three. It's important you know them, but it's very important the man knows how to do it. And the worst thing you can do, of course, apart from that, that's very bad. The other thing, of course, is not to articulate this leg. There's a lot of work going on here. It's not. Okay, let's try it again. Hmm? No, well, I've given that one the music. Can't hear it. Ready, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, and close, and check, come in, and check. Replace. Two, and three, and four, and two, and three, and four, two, Three, four, shit. Keep them going there a bit, Joe. Do you have a rumble? Do you have to have a rumble? Or, 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 or. Okay, I've only got time to say one more thing. <coughs> the difference between a happy social dancer, and they're very important people, but a social dancer that comes through a school who wants to dance better, the difference is one of foot speed. A social dancer dances slow foot speeds. And a little bit more excellence, a little more quality, the dancer is dancing a foot speed that's a little faster. And this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a foot speed that is not as slow as you can make it, it's as fast as you can make it without disturbing anything. This is slow foot speed.
This is rather slow. This is. <laughs> to stop. Thank you very much for working so hard. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, dear. Thank you, sir. Really great. Got it right for me. Thank you, Wally. Thank you very much, Julie, for a lovely lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'd like to show your appreciation once more for Walter and Julie Laird, please. That, I'm sorry to say, completes our lectures for today. We do hope you've all enjoyed them. I know I have, and I hope you have. I look forward to seeing you all tonight at the dinner dance, um, 7 o'clock reception. And just another gentle reminder that down in the Westbourne Suite, they are holding the World Dance and Dance Sport Council's Fun Dance Competition now.